Good morning and welcome back to another Saturday Day with Salon, one half of the two Pondering Pagans and I am excited to bring a new deck today and uh, stick around and see what it is. And good morning, afternoon, whatever time it is when you are reading this. So, not that you're reading this, you're watching. Oh, it's going to be a fun day. It's still early in the morning for me, uh, as it usually is. But I have a different deck today. I have um, Tarot of Dragons. This is illustrated by Firat Solan and uh, written with and by Sean McKenzie. So, um, it's a deck that I uh, have not used before. It's brand new to me. Um, and I'm really excited to use it because lately, I think uh, maybe in uh, the energies of the universe, at least for me, dragons have been speaking a lot. So there's been a lot of, I don't want to say dragon energy because dragon energy to me is just, uh, or not just, uh, but it is a representation through other energies as well. It's dragon energy. It's this primal, primordial, strong, gentle, it's everything. It's got all of the energies of the universe um, together. And the dragons have been talking. They've been telling us things. <clears throat> They've been present forever, but off of this realm for the treatment of humans and how we have treated them. So I find it very interesting that dragons are still even interested to appear or become part of our psyche and bring themselves into the realm where we can see and understand them. But I gather that that's kind of how pretty much uh, a lot of deity is, you know? It's um, this presence, and I think of all of all animals, humans are probably the weakest because we push those things into ourselves that make us weak and we lose sight of things so easily when other animals know exactly what they're looking for, you know? I think that's um, something that can be said. So why, um, you know, the, the dogs and cats and uh, domesticated and wild animals, they don't need the dragon energy because they already are the dragon energy. They already are the universal energy. You know, human beings are too. We we are on a much smaller level, I think, uh, than we a should be and b want to be. And dragons can help us get there. I am by no means an expert on dragons. I haven't even probably formulated a full um, uh, understanding of dragon energy myself I've you know I've read a couple books and talked to a few people that's not enough to say I'm certainly even more than a novice um, but what I'm not a novice at is the tarot so this is a really comfortable and nice way for me to learn a little bit more about dragon energy um, and hope to continue that journey with the with the group and the friends and anything so if you have any uh, information or recommendations related to dragons whether it's tarot or not, those are great things that I would like you to comment. Um, but as always, if you have any comments about the tarot, you can do that too. But let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to jump right in today uh, with what our tarot is saying. All right, so we've got some good energy already. Good grief. Um, first, we have the Queen of Pentacles. Three of Cups, which has been in a couple of different readings lately. And the Lovers. So one thing I'm going to um, start with is, you know, uh, Lover, Cups, and even the um, Queen of Pentacles all carry a very uh, feminine emotion quality to them. Um, feminine as in just traditional ways for people to understand. But what's nice about it is there's the continuity between this um spread whether it's dragons or not but the dragons themselves these are gorgeous cards these are very very talking cards we've got a lot of energy of people being around and that's not been in our readings a lot 
um, until the last maybe month or so, we've started to get a lot more on community, on working with your tribes and, and kind of getting out there. So we're getting that energy right now. Um, let's go through the cards first. Uh, let's look at them as a whole real quick, right? So we're looking at a spread that starts with a queen. We go into the three, which is a friendly energy, and then we go into the lovers. Um, if you are not connected uh, to your other half, I would keep an eye out because this is this is definitely on the the realm of love is out there. Now we often talk about how the lovers card doesn't necessarily mean romantic love, right? It just it's a love. It's a communion between two people. I don't know if communion is the right word. It's like a communication between two people. It's a connection there. Um, in this case, though, when I'm coupling it with um, this queen energy um, and this three of cups togetherness, I'm getting that these are uh, deep love, not necessarily romantic, uh, but very deep and very meaningful. So if you are in the single realm or if you are, maybe you're looking for a third, I don't know how that works for you, but uh, there is something coming. There is a revelation of love energy in the, 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 the stuff this week, the, uh, the energies this week. And this is really cool to me because we haven't been getting any feel good, any real feel good readings lately. And I think we need one and I think this is going to give it to us. So let's back up though. We, we talked a little bit about just kind of the cards flowing together and what we're looking at as an overall summary of this is a revelation of love and a communication of love between people. Um, not just two people either. This is Potentially one person, but potentially more than one person uh, coming to terms to things that are working together. Um, I'd almost venture to say if you're an individual that works through a polyamorous relationships, you're about to find your third or your additional people that are going to um, become part of your tribe. But um, looking at just the imagery and the colors, um, we're seeing a, a green, blue, and then green, blue. So if you can imagine the energies, these are compounding energies. So when I'm reading this, it's going to read a little differently than I normally would, right? Normally, you can think of things in mind, body, spirit, or past, present, future, which is still applicable here. But because I'm going from a symbolism and feeling a symbolism um, from the queen saying, I am the queen of the earth and the pentacles, and I am the one raising the next generation and I am the one um, begetting and pulling the energies out of the earth and making them physical uh, running right into this um, all blue card with no green um, about friendship and going out and having fun and connecting with your group uh, and your people and then going into a card that's literally almost yin yang and the blue and the green uh, for an end result of merging your energies together so we need to merge earth and water this week in the next couple of weeks and get out of it the merging and the love that comes with it. Now, like I've said, this doesn't always mean romantic love, but this is definitely a deep love. This is a uh, deck. This is truly deep love. That That's just what it is. Um, but the thing that, that I really want to point out is um, it doesn't have to or necessarily even mean love of people. Um, this could be your deep finding connection with the world or with the universe or the nature around you. Maybe this week you're doing a final step into a, you know, a, a self-mastery of what it is you're looking for with the world. Um, but let's, let's talk about the cards individually now. We've talked a little bit about the three together and how I'm merging them in my head. And that is different energy than I would normally do. I'm just following what the cards are telling. Um, but we have that and we have the colorations um, and you're going one, three, two, right? There's, there's, a, there's a pattern emerging, but let's talk about the individual cards. So I talked a minute about the Queen of Pentacles already. She's Queen of the Earth. That's the easiest way to look at it. This is the growth and the creation of the next generation. It is um, an understanding of being comfortable and fully embodied in oneself. The Queen of Pentacles knows what she wants, and she wants finer things, and that's okay. She's allowed to do that. You're allowed to do that. You may not always get the finer things, and you have to recognize that, but the Queen is all about, I, I want it, and if that's what it, I want, and that's what I'm going to get, and that's okay. Um, but I'm also bringing up and creating the, um, the layer. I am building the incubator for the growth of the next generation, 
so that it'll be present and it will be standard and it will be substantial was actually the word, word I'm looking for instead of standard. It'll be substantial. So there's no weak trees here, right? This is an old tree in this image. This is not a weak um, uh, dragon, if ever there is one. Uh, she is at her strongest point. Uh, anything coming in to potentially cause her harm, she's going to take it down. And even her eggs that she has are beautiful beyond compare. So this, this physicality of structure and strength is supporting the process of everything that's going to be happening. And that's what the queens do. The queens set the standard of all of the embodiment of whatever that energy is. So she is the earth, right? Um, pregnancy, that's the earth, that's the, the germination, the season of uh, growing when uh, previously barren, you know, of the winter. So our queen of pentacles here in and of herself is talking about setting up that, that, that structure and making sure that it's set and that it's strong enough to carry everything that's about to happen. Our three of cups, this is a much lighter card. This is a card that's saying, look, go out and fly with your friends, do the thing. None of the cups are tipped. The water is beautiful. We're comfortable. The skyline is gorgeous. Um, and we're just out having fun and we're going to go out and meet people and we're going to go out and integrate with our group and we're going to go do the thing. And that's what you have to do at this point right now if you want to go to that next level. Um, so Three of Cups, generally speaking, um, is, is all about, I don't want to say community necessarily, but going in and, and interacting with your connections and being with your connections. That is the uh, critical part for a Three of Cups for me. The dragons add in a bit of playfulness and a bit of strength at the same time, saying, you know, we're going we're gonna to go do the thing uh, again, just like the queen. She's going to do her thing, and it, nobody's stopping her. Three of Cups, we're going to go out and have a drink. We're going to enjoy the life that we have. And that's what the Three of Cups generally talks about. And then the final card, which is probably, I have to say, might be one of my favorite in visions of the lovers. Like, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know, I usually use a steampunk deck, which also has a very pretty lover's card. Uh, but this one, it's, it's very... It's, uh, it's connecting two elements. It's um, putting earth and water who are on different playing fields in this card on the same level. So that's another thing I, I know I noticed the, um, the, the trend here of green, blue, and then green, blue, but I didn't even make the brain connection of earth, water, and then earth and water together. And that's what you're seeing in the lovers. Now remember, it's just a deep love. It doesn't mean specifically or necessarily my romantic love, but Judging by what I'm seeing with the Queen of Pentacles and that, that standardization, that structuring and that hold, holding steady and the going out and meeting people, I'm seeing some deep love here. This maybe is rekindling the deep love of a friendship that you've lost and you need to get back to. That could be it. Um, but this is definitely not just um, falling in love with somebody like head over heels. This is this deep like connection restored. And so the lover's card is often about gaining that extra insight or that extra piece of thing for you. Um, doesn't always, uh, and I say this a lot, but it doesn't always represent a person. Like major arcana cards uh, don't necessarily represent people to me. Or they, Oh, the lover's card is here. That must mean you're going to find love. Oh, if the lover's card is reversed, that must mean you're not going to find love. Mm. The lover's card is about love itself. And the people and animals and energies that are present within that love and that love transcends what we see as romantic love now as human beings we have probably a hard time trying to figure out what that means but um in in the truest sense of the forms it is community your love is in the community uh, you are in the community you are in the support structure that the queen has created for you uh, and you are in the structure that allows you to go out and and enjoy friends even if you don't have money um, but the lovers, and that takes it into a next realm. That says, let's go deeper. Let's go into this mutual respect of each other. Let's go into this um, almost divine, if not truly divine aspect of ourselves and of those and the things that are around us. So I like to use things because I'm not saying people are things, but it represents not just people. It represents all of the things. It represents um, the care and compassion you maybe have for patients if that's something that you are in love with your job, uh, your work. Um, 
you know, the earth itself right now is uh, where I am is constantly raining and cleansing itself with water. So water is constantly covering and on the earth. This lover's card is an absolute representation of that. Go out and love the land that you're on and respect it and have deep respect and deep love for it. Um, those are all potential meanings for me in these cards and I like to share those just because, you know, we're talking. But um, I will say, judging by what I'm seeing though, just putting it all together, um, green, blue, green, blue, earth, water, earth and water. Um, uh, uh, this separation and separation and then together and this um uh well actually none of them are, are alone uh, dragons with mama and some other animals and the earth the, the queen of drag or queen of um <laughs> pinnacles and in the three of cups we're all having fun together and we're enjoying each other's company over the waters uh which underneath the water is what earth um and then we're together in our final card so I'm definitely getting some go out, do stuff in the community this week, do stuff with your friends, meet new people, um, and expect a deep connection that's going to either happen or get started this week, um, or a deep rekindling of a connection. Um, and that is it for today. Um, I really do enjoy this deck. This was very pretty. Um, I probably will uh, read the introduction to the book because I don't like to read necessarily the traditional meanings or the meaning set forth. Um, by the writers and stuff. So that's something that's maybe a little bit different, but um, the, the deck itself is just very pretty and, and, and very nice. It very much reminds me of my steampunk deck, um, which I use constantly for, for readings. This is, um, this is just something that's very uh, powerful yet kind at the same time. So if you have any questions or any comments about the read or anything that you would like to add or ask, uh, make sure you write a comment below if you want to see more of these videos like uh, and of course subscribe to see this and other videos that we have coming out including our shadow work eclipsing the shadow uh, that just released its first episode yesterday um, with that i hope you all are having a wonderful day and a wonderful week and pay attention to being out with friends and meeting new people and allow yourself to do that